Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this week's Backyard Naturalist. Michelle Milford is going to tell us about her backyard natural or her backyard chickens, um, which I'm very excited to hear about. And um, thank you to all of you subscribers who are here, to all of you Urban Ecology Center members who are here. You make it possible for us to do this. Um, and so without further ado, I give you Michelle. Hello. Um, as uh, mentioned, I'm Michelle Milford, work at the Urban Ecology Center. A um, little bit of background um, about me. I uh, studied zoology in school, so that's what my background is in. And for a while I did um, uh, zookeeping and I did some wildlife rehab. Um, not that any of that makes me an expert on chickens. <laughs> But uh, I somehow feel like that gives me slightly more credit on the subject of, of backyard chickens. Um, so I, the kind of presentation I put together is, um, is more geared towards how you would get, what steps you would need to take in order to get set up to have backyard chickens and some of the things that you can, should consider uh, before, before committing to getting chickens. So um, that, that, that's the, the angle I took with it. But it, if anyone has any other just kind of general chicken questions or you're like oh I I don't I don't think I'll ever get chickens or whatnot um and anyways we could um we could talk more about other things at the at the end is kind of what I'm saying um so let me share my screen with the presentation all right hopefully everyone can see that um so before we started we were talking a little bit about um about bird watching and uh, chickens are not native <laughs> native birds. Uh, originally, the first domestic chicken um, was uh, came from Asia. So we will proceed. So I always like to start with why people should get backward chickens. Um, these are just a couple of the reasons. I'm sure the list could be much longer, but I think that these are the ones that are uh, most notable. Um, obviously, the first one is fresh eggs. Uh, I think um, that is probably the reason that most people <laughs> get backyard chickens, and I think it is a great reason. Um, the, the eggs are delicious, and I have done kind of a, a taste test between my chicken eggs and then the uh, store, store bought eggs, and I do personally feel like you can, um, you can taste a difference. You can definitely see a difference. Um, uh, more of a, a free range, I guess, bird uh, has a much um, darker yolk than, than kind of what you would get at a traditional um, grocery store. Uh, so the other reason that is great is just for family education. That's my son there with our chickens. Uh, I think it's really important that my children know where their food is coming from um, and how it, is, how it is produced. Um, and, and even just, just for us as a family, like to give thanks to those chickens for providing us eggs. So I think that's a really great reason. Another one, if you're a gardener um, or you do a lot of landscaping around your house, the fertilizer and compost you get from chickens is wonderful. Uh, so you can, I think what, what some people do or what we do is um, you can kind of till up the soil that is under their coop and then move that and add it into your compost. Um, and it just adds a, a whole lot of great nutrients and things like that, um, that maybe you couldn't get otherwise. And then um, food waste reduction, uh, that, is, that is just a huge worldwide problem, right? That we have, that we have a lot of food waste and chickens are a great little garbage disposals <laughs> is what I like to say. Um, towards the end, I talk about what chickens can and can't eat. We can't give them everything, but they will, they will eat a, pretty much all of your food scraps, which I think is a huge benefit. And then I wrote pest control in there, probably not one of the main reasons people get chickens, but I think it's notable. Um, they love insects, uh, and um, the um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up. Those little green bugs, the uh, Japanese beetles, that are very invasive. Uh, they love, lo absolutely love those. So um, I mean, just just there, I think it's great, especially for our yard. We have very few of those. Um, we also were having kind of an, an ant problem um, with the ants coming up towards our house and the chickens took care of it once I let them out of their coop. So, um, so there's, there's that too. So kind of what you 
want to think about before you commit to getting chickens. You know, if you saw all those reasons and you were like, hey, this sounds wonderful. Um, one is where you're going to put them. Super important. Uh, are you ready to care for them in every season? This is, this is something when I got chickens, um, I didn't think about the winter. And uh, that that is, it is kind of a, I wouldn't say a downfall, but it's a little bit of a bummer when you have to go out when it's freezing cold and shovel their coop and, um, you know, still do all of your normal chicken chores in the freezing cold. So I always tell people before you decide that you want to get chickens, just make sure that you are ready to uh, tolerate every season to care for them. Um, the other thing is you do kind of have to have at least some sort of support network or um, get onto a Facebook group uh, or, or something like that. There are a lot of, there's a pretty large chicken network um, of people who would probably help you care for them if you had to go on vacation or something happened. Um, but that is just like when you get any pet, right? That's something to consider is what's going to happen if, if you're not around. Um, and then one of the more important just logistical ones is what are the permit rules for keeping chickens in your city? Some cities don't allow you to have chickens. Um, and so obviously you, you shouldn't get them. Um, I pulled together um, the city of Milwaukee's chicken rules. Um, kind of, it's pretty, it's actually pretty basic for most cities. I think this is kind of standard. Um, up to four chickens are allowed, um, only laying hens, no roosters. And I said laying hens because you, can, you can't, you um, can't, have any, uh, they call them broiler chickens. So those would be the chickens that you would get with the intention of eating. And you cannot have those in the city of Milwaukee. Um, although that is a, um, that is also a, a, um, a good, you know, kind of sustainable way to, um, to get meat for your family. Um, if that was, if you're outside of the city of Milwaukee, you can look and see if that is something you would be interested in. I personally, um, get very attached to my chickens. So I don't think that that I could do it. Um, but it is a great way to, um, you know, you know that the chickens were treated well. Um, that it, you know, it, it of course depends on depends on your ethical code, but um, some people really kind of swear by that. Um, so then some of the other ones are more just about the coop. One of the things that uh, I want to note is that in the city of Milwaukee, it has to be raised off the ground or placed on a hard surface. And um, so I'll, I'll talk about um, coop structure in, in a bit here. Um, but so wherever you live, just make sure that you look up the rules and um, make sure that you're following them because once people start to go out of the rules, that's when then cities kind of say, you know, we're, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna let people have chickens anymore. So we wanna follow the rules so that everyone can keep having, having chickens. Um, I'm gonna pause there real quick. Does anyone have any questions just on that first little bit? We can also do, you can also save questions for the end, but I had thought while I was on the time. Looks like no. So, um, so step one in getting chickens would be uh, choosing your breed. And I think that's kind of a surprise to people because I feel like they just go and pick up a chick or a chicken and like, here I am. Um, but chickens are very much like dogs in that they have uh, very different personality traits. Um, and for, it, at least for like one of the main reasons that people get chickens, which would be the eggs, um, they do a lay varying amounts, right? Some, some produce a ton of eggs, some produce less. Um, there's different color eggs, there's different size eggs. So um, I, I always say that you should choose your chicken breed like you should choose dog. <laughs> um, in a past life, I trained dogs as well. And one of the problems that I think I always saw is that people chose the wrong dog breed for their family, right? Like if you, if you have a more of a sedentary family, if you don't like to, to get out a lot, um, probably a German short hair pointer is not the dog for you. So likewise, um, with chickens, you know, if you, if you have a family and um, you want your chickens to be very, very friendly with them, then I would choose a chicken breed that is known for, um, you know, being being friendly towards towards children and that kind of stuff. So you can look up all all the chicken breeds, and it'll give you a whole bunch of characteristics. Um, but one thing definitely for Wisconsin is you need 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 to choose a chicken breed that does well in cold climates. So these are some of the ones um, 
that that do the best. And also just to note um, that all most of my graphics I have in here, the photos are mine. So that's actually my little one of my chickens when she was a babe. Um, but the graphics are from the Happy Coop, which is just a wonderful website. If you are interested in getting back your chickens, they have just a wealth of resources. Um, but I have um, Bard Rock, which I'll talk more about. Like, most people call them Plymouth Rocks, but they can also be Bard Rock. Um, and I have a Silver Lace Wine Dot and a Golden Lace Wine Dot. And then I also had had a Buff Orpington. Um, Rhode Island Reds are a very popular bird. Um, they're super sweet, great layers. Um, but so my, I guess, um, my warning here is I kind of chose the right breed for me and kind of didn't. So I chose um, a Bard Rock, which is this. And you can see me here with um, my gal, this is Dora Dale. All of my chickens have two names. So this is Dora Dale. Um, and then there's, again, some, some characteristics here. Super curious bird. Um, they are always up at our window and um, checking stuff out. Um, they kind of, this is kind of a, I would say, a, not lower, but some birds can lay up to 300 eggs per year, which is, is a lot. Um, but this is still really great laying production. This year says that egg producti productivity declines about the third year, but they can lay for up to 10 years, which is big. A lot of birds can lay around like five to six years. So, um, so this is also kind of like, while they may not lay as many, they have much more longevity. Um, and then the reason that we got one is because they're just so great with families and they're, they're super sweet birds. They let us pet them and, and, and hold them. Um, the warning I was talking about is I have a silver laced wine dot and a um, a golden laced wine dot, and I got those two birds because they were pretty, <laughs> which you should not do unless that is your goal, right? Unless you just want pretty birds, then you're choosing the right the right breed. Um, but wine dots are not always the nicest birds, and they can be a little bit aggressive. So um, looking back. I, I wish I would have gotten more buff Orpingtons or more um, more rocks instead of the wine dots just because they're pretty. So once you choose a chicken breed, um, well, you have to get you have to get them, um, and you can you can certainly go to somewhere like Farm and Fleet or or any of those, but you can also find a lot of great local resources. Um, of farms that have um, lane hens. So, and that you wanna be really careful too that you, you ensure that you are getting hens and, and not roosters. So wherever you go, make sure that they are very good at sexing the chickens or the chicks. Um, but so there's a couple different ways in which you could go about this. You can get hatching eggs. Um, that's a lot, a lot more work and I would, I would recommend against it. Um, I also do not have a lot of experience here. Most common, you get chicks, uh, which is which is fun. Then they tend to imprint on you, which is great. And um, but it is still slightly more work, right? In the beginning, um, you could get them when they're in this in between stage between chicks and adults. Um, this I would say is probably the the e one of the easiest. Like you'll still bond with your chicken when they're young, um, but you won't have to deal with them when they're all clumsy and falling in their water. <laughs> um, and then they'll start laying more quickly too. You could also adopt an adult chicken, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing to do too. I know a lot of people like to get the chicks simply because they're cute and they're you know little baby chicks and, and all that, but um, adopting an adult is great. The only thing about that is you don't know their age. And so you may be getting a chicken that is at the end of her, um, like her like laying productivity. Um, so you just have to be, mindful of that. And then the other thing too I wrote down here is remember chickens don't like to be alone. So they do like to be in flocks. So while if, you know, city of Milwaukee can have um, four birds, I had five and then one of mine passed away. So I have four now, which feels like a good number to me, but I wouldn't ever get just one chicken. So if, if you if you don't want to do four, I would at least get two though, um, so that they have a, a buddy um, that also helps them in the coop in the winter to stay warm and all that, all that good stuff. Any 
Any questions on this like preliminary picking your bird? <laughs> So I'm going to start here because I think this is probably what most people are interested in would be um, getting chickens as chicks. And um, so this is just kind of a, a, a step by step of or a checklist of, of what you'll need. And it's actually really easy to raise them as chicks. The only thing I would say that is like time consuming is you do have to clean up a little bit after them or um. Uh, maybe more than you would when they're adults um, because they just they're clumsy they make a mess and things like that but so you'll need a some kind of box this example here is just a cardboard box I actually used an old I had like a big um uh like a metal planter uh and you know it was it was like two feet and so I actually just put mine in there <laughs> really don't need anything fancy they could go in a, a Tupperware container um but truly anything so just some kind of container and then you'll need bedding um pine shavings are the most recommended um, they stay pretty clean and and they tend not to irritate the chicks and then you'll need a feeder and a waterer so the feeders look like oh, can anyone see my oh oops um, anyways, the, pur the purple one here is, is the feeder and it's made so that you can put the food, you know, put the food up into the jar and then as the birds eat more food will just kind of fall through. And then the water one looks very similar here, but it is water, you know, it's this red one here at the bottom. Um, this person chose to put little marbles in there, um, just it can help the chicks not like shove their whole face in there and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, the feed that you'll want to use, they uh, they have it tiered basically at the wherever you go to buy your food, um, like I said, Farm and Fleet or or somewhere else. Uh, but when they're younger, they they need um, different ratio of of food. Um, usually, they need more um, protein and and things like that. So um, you'll want to start with a starter feed, and then. Um, you don't have to get vitamins, but you can. I added like a vitamin supplement into their water just to make sure that they were growing up healthy. And then no protection there because I have a cat. <laughs> and uh, and I also have a, a, a dog and he's um, he is a, a hunting breed. And so I had to make sure that when we got our little chicks that they were safe. So we put, oh, we just put like a screening over it um, just to make sure the cat couldn't jump in and the dog couldn't hop in and, and all that good stuff. And we actually um, slowly introduced our cat and dog to the, the chickens. So now they're very comfortable with them. Um, it's actually hilarious because my chickens imprinted on the cat <laughs> and uh, they'll follow him around. Sometimes I'll bring the cat outside and they'll follow, um, my cat around and I think the cat is like what is what is going on here and the chickens are like <laughs> so it's very cute and then the last thing you'll need which is super important when you have little babies is a heat lamp and that's what this silver thing is here um 95 degrees to start and then um there's a chart I, I should have pulled it up but um you can look it up you basically just start lowering by five degrees um until they're a little bit older and can can regulate better. Any questions on the chicks and setting up a brooder box? There is a question on how long it takes to grow from a chick to a laying hen. Yes. Um, so it usually from like chick to laying hen, I would say about six months. Um, and that's when they'll actually start laying an egg but they'll start looking you know more more and more like an adult at, at like three or four months but then it takes them a little while to actually start their egg production um so it's really not it's not very long <laughs> um and uh so i would say honestly they're they're probably in their brooder box for oh and i will i will double check on this and follow up because it's been a while since I did the brooder box. <laughs> um, but they're probably only in there about a month or two. Um, and then they could be moved once they get in their, their new feathers. Um, and I have a picture too of when they start to look more, they, they're in that in-between stage, which is pull it. Um, and uh, we, could we could take a look at what 
you know, as, as they start to transition between chicken, chicken. But yeah, but about but six months or more until they're actually going to start laying an egg for you, um, which is a good question. I would recommend if you were going to get chicks, actually, like in the end-ish of winter is a great time to do it because you can do all of this brooder box indoors during the winter. And then when they're ready to move into their coop in the spring, it's, you know, it's nice outside and you won't, you won't have to heat anything outside. So then after, like I said, after they're out of the brooder box, they would move into an actual coop. And um, there are a handful of things that you should think about when you're designing your coop. This is our coop here, but this was not our first coop. Um, I'll show you a picture of more what our first coop looked like, but it can be extremely basic. This is this is like a lot more, you know, more involved. You know, this is when we decided like, yeah, we're committed to chickens and we built this. Um, but most of them look like just this little structure here. So I'll just start with number one here. It says the coop must be waterproof. You know, you don't want your chickens being soaking wet. So that's basically just saying that you have slanted, slanted roofs so that any water is gonna um, go off and not in and down. Um, and then two, it says must have enough space for your chickens. Um, so usually they say, I think two, two to three square feet per chicken they need. Um, but I always, I would go bigger. I mean, I think the reason too you're trying, you're getting chickens, right, is um, at least for me, is that then you know that they're having a good life, you know, and that um, you're you're getting your food from happy hens. So um, when you're looking at the the space confinements for them, I would kind of, I would just use your best judgment, right? Like I would look at it and say, if I was a chicken, would I be happy in there? <laughs> um, which is kind of a silly way to look at it, but. Um, I think that you want your chickens to be happy, right? They're kind of going to become a part of your family. Um, and then the, the coop needs to have some kind of ventilation. Um, a lot of, so like, oh, it's hard to see in, in this picture, but we we have some gaps in between where the, um, like the actual box is so that it gets it gets airflow in there. Um, a lot of coops will actually just come with a vent, which is great, and you can open and close it. Um, and those are the ones that you'll, you'll, you could buy offline, which there are so many different coops you can get online where you don't have to build anything. You can just buy one. Um, and then four, they have to have nesting boxes, of course. Chickens like a place they lay their eggs and then a place that they sleep or roost. So the nesting box in this picture is this kind of um, little thing that juts out here, um, which is then also where you would just be able to easily lift up the, um, the latch there and get the eggs, which is super. And then five um, roosts need to be need to be fitted in. So obviously you don't want the roost to be loose because the chickens could fall off, and then you're going to always have to be in there um, uh, of fixing it, obviously. Um, but the other thing too is you don't want your roost to be too wide or too skinny because that could be very bad for um, for their feet. And so you want it about probably about two inches is the roost. And um, most of the coops that you'll buy offline have a, have a standard roost, roost size. So you don't need to worry about it at all. But if you are building your own um, and you're using any kind of like rods or things like that that you get at Home Depot, you know, they have those wooden circular rods there sometimes. Um, they do have to be wide enough that the, that the chicken's feet can go like this and not so wide that they're sprawled out or not so wide that their toes are starting to curl. Um, so that's just important uh, for the longevity and, and healthier chickens. And then um, number six, six, they need some kind of outside roaming pen area. Chickens, like everyone, want to be outside and, and want to feel the sunshine. So want to make sure that they have um, an area to be outside. They are also um, instinctually, they're going to want to scratch and dig up at the soil and try to find bugs and stuff. So um, giving them an opportunity to do that is very important for their chicken mental, mental health. And then, um, this is important, <laughs> the coop must be uh, predator proof. Uh, if it is not, you will learn 
that lesson very quickly. And it is a hard, it's a really hard lesson to, to learn. Um, so I would think when you are making your coop, think about the latches you're putting in, think about how smart raccoons are and that they do have, you know, <laughs> the ability to open, um, open things. <laughs> so you want to make sure that uh, it, 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 you're making it difficult for anything other than you to get in there. Um, one thing that we did along the edge of our chicken coop, um, we had had a fox that was trying to dig under the coop to get in, which is very, very common. And so we put in, they sell these metal stakes, basically, and they, you know, you Put, put them into the on, the, on the outside of the coop and they go into the ground so that when an animal tries to dig under, they hit the metal. Um, and, then, and then you can obviously repair where they started to dig after you see that happening. So here are some examples. This one up here, aside from this metal roof, the gray one, um, can you see my cursor or no? Yep, we can. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that like when I'm pointing that you can actually see it. So the aside from the metal roof here, this is actually one that um, a pretty good example of one that you could get online. And so, you know, they have the, the box all set up. This is where you would open it and then you can um, muck out the pine shavings as you need to. Um, this here is a good example of a built-in ventilation system, right? So you can unlatch it and then let some air in there. And then this of course is their outdoor area, which is really nice. And it's super cute. That's what I love about chicken coops too. They're adorable. Um, I put this one in here as a good example of what it looks like on the inside. So this is where the chickens would go in here and then um, where they would lay their eggs. And then the this person has it where it kind of drops down and then they grab their eggs. Um, and then these are the roosts here. And the roosts are really important. That's how they like to sleep and hang out. Um, I have seen people build chickens uh, roost swings, which is super fun and the chickens love it. Um, so you can get really creative with, with your roosts. This one over here, this red one, aside from the window, this is the chicken coop that my husband and I built. And so we just found plans online and we built this exact one again without the window because at a certain point we were like, okay, this is enough. <laughs> and then um, this one down here in the corner, this is another great example of one that you can buy online. This is actually almost identical to what my first coop looked like. So it was, it was pretty basic. They, they were just able to um, have an area in here to roost, an area to lay their eggs, and then an area to come out and explore. And then um, obviously you can see these two chickens down here. They're having some time outside their coop, um, which it's not necessary, but I think, I think it's important um, for them to be able, be able to do that. You just have to watch chickens though, because they love mulch, love it, love it. And they will dig up all of your landscaping if you have mulch. Um, and then this one over here, I put this in as like the Taj Mahal of chicken coops. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this, or you can get real crazy and do this, right? So this person has a whole um, shed. They have a huge area for their chickens um, and they've made it obviously very beautiful. It's super cute. Um, there, I think like with most things, there are people who are like me, we're just kind of like in the middle. I, I like my chickens. I, I think I treat them pretty well. And then um, there are people who are I, I'm not below me, but just on the other side of the spectrum who are just kind of like, yeah, I got chickens. And then there's people on the other side that are like chicken experts and they are, um, they are, they are set up like this for their chickens, which I would, love to aspire to that, but certainly I'm not there yet. <laughs> Any other questions on, on coop setup? And like the, what the chicken needs. And I would say too, like, so any of these, this one, this one, this one, easily could fit four chickens in there. So you would have no problem in any of these, four chickens would be happy in those. Now some of the not, not fun stuff about chickens. <laughs> um, uh, so I wrote here, step four, educate yourself. Uh, so you need to be prepared for certain things. 
Um, the first one, I mentioned it in your coop design, but inevitably you are going to get um, other, other critters that call your backyard home that think your chicken eggs or your chickens are, are a meal. So just really make sure when you're setting up your coop that you're thinking about, you're thinking about predators. Um, and also I would say too, like what, what your plans are if, if you have an animal who's very, very interested in, in your chickens and in the coop. Um, we had had a whole possum family that uh, kept finding their way into our chicken coop. Um, thankfully they were young possums and they were coming in through a hole. This was before I discovered the, um, uh, the, the metal spikes that you can put in at the uh, bottom perimeter of your, of your coop. Um, but every night for three nights, a uh, young juvenile possum was coming into the coop. One, because it was warm, it was very warm. So they were doing this in the winter. And two, they wanted to eat the eggs. And so um, what we did is every night we caught baby possum and then we brought them over to a, um, a, an, an SNA. Um, and so that they could live their life there instead of in, in our backyard terrorizing our chickens. Um, Next one is molting. I think when this happens for the first time, people are very alarmed. It is when a chicken replaces all their feathers. So they'll lose, they'll, they usually start, they start to lose their feathers up at their neck. And then when they grow in, it looks very bizarre because you, you have chicken skin and then this like spike grow, <laughs> growing out where the feather is, go is gonna come out. Um, it's cool. It's a cool thing to see, but at first you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening to my chickens? So if that happens, it's totally fine. Usually when they molt, they don't lay eggs though. So that's another thing just to keep in mind is that when they're going through that, they're, they're giving all of their energy to molting and not to their egg production. So, um, so something to keep in mind. Thankfully, I've never had to deal with this one, but it is something people should know about. Broodiness is when a chicken decides that, um, her eggs are gonna hatch. And so she'll she'll sit on them 24 hours a day, you know, trying to make her eggs hatch. I think it's actually really sad <laughs> because, you know, it's a, basically a mother willing um, babies into her life. So it's, it's not super common, but it, it does happen. Um, and there's ways when they get broody um, that you can kind of, help them through that. <laughs> uh, the, the best way though is to remove the eggs as quickly as possible from the coop so that they don't have an opportunity to become um, broody. And then four, I've dealt with this one a lot. Um, chickens have a very, very strong hierarchy within their block unit. Um, so there will always be someone at the top and someone at the bottom. And unfortunately that does result in bullying. Um, no, I, I guess I said I dealt with it a lot, but it just seems like every year I have one poor chicken who's getting picked on as they establish their pecking order because it can change. Um, the only time I had to intervene was they, um, one of my chickens had gotten pecked in the face. Chickens can become very obsessive then. So then all the other chickens started pecking because she was bleeding and they were they essentially got like obsessed with that. And so I had to remove her from, remove her from the coop, treat her wounds, um, and then slowly reintroduce her back into the flock. So that was a little bit, um, you know, these are the kind of things I think people just don't think about. Like it obviously was more time consuming and I had to spend a lot of time with that one chicken, um, but it resolved and, and it was okay. Um, and then time outside the coop, uh, this one, like I said, it's not necessary, but I just think it's really important. And it's also a great way for you to bond with your chickens. They'll uh, follow you around the yard if you if you spent a lot of time with them when they were chicks. Um, my chickens know that when I say chicky, 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 <laughs> that uh, it means I'm going to give them treats. So uh, I would also recommend doing that if you get chickens to give them some kind of call. They're very smart um, and they can learn basic commands and especially a, a, a like come here call. That's a very easy one to teach. Uh, just like with a dog, um, you just want to come up with some kind of command. I did the chicky chicky because I thought it was cute. And then every time I say chicky chicky, they get a treat. And so now they know when I do that. Um, the other thing I did too is just shake their treat jar. And then they know right away like, oh, mom's giving us treats. Um, egg production. 
again, just a note is that they're not going to lay eggs their entire life. And so you need a plan when they stop laying eggs. You know, if they become unvaluable to you at that point, what are you going to do with them? Right. Are you going to are you going to rehome them? Um, are you, it, technically in the city of Milwaukee, you cannot slaughter chickens and I would not recommend it. I again, I, I think that when you um, commit to getting chickens, you commit to getting them for their whole lives. But that is, you know, again, just something to keep in mind is that their egg production will not be 100 percent for their whole life. And then the last thing is dust baths, which is an adorable thing that chickens do and they love. Uh, it's how they clean their feathers, keep um, uh, parasites and bugs off of them. It, it's pretty simple to do. You can pretty much just take dry dirt and then um, any, kind, any kind of sawdust. Uh, you can also put in, there's this, this thing called um, DE, which is essentially, um, it's like very, very, very tiny shards of glass. And it, um, that sounds bad. But it's it's for it breaks down the exo exoskeleton of um, of a pest like ants and stuff. People use it around their homes and things like that. But the chickens like it because it keeps pests off of them and and all of that. Um, so you can put it like I've seen people put it into a tire. Like they put a tire in the coop and then they put the dust bath in there and the chickens can do their thing. If you're letting your chickens have a lot of time outside the coop. They'll do. They'll take dust baths just in in the dirt. They'll take them in your mulch. Um, you know, they'll find a place. So it's not necessary, I guess, to make them a dust bath if if they have time outside the coop. That was a lot of information. So, is there any questions on those things? How often do they mulch? What was that? I'm sorry. How often do they molt? Oh, molt. Um, probably once a year is pretty typical. Um, so you'll just be there'll be a, a brief period in which, like I said, they stop laying. They don't all stop laying, but mine mine never lay when they molt. So I don't know if mine just are lazy or what. But um, yeah, so I would say once a year, maybe year and a half. You know. Um, by DEE, uh, DE, do you mean diatomaceous earth? Yes, I do. Sorry, I do. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that, that, that that's what diatomaceous earth was. Ground yes. Up. It's so the, and you know, we could, okay, I'm not an expert on that for sure, but um, from what I've read, yes, it's it's very, very small. I guess not glass, but like to an, to an ant, it would be sharp, super sharp. And then it um, it breaks and it dries out their exos exoskeleton. Sorry, I cannot say that word. Um, and then I mean, ultimately, it kills them. Um, but the the chickens like it, <laughs> and it keeps them healthy. So. How long do they live? Chickens? Yes. Yeah, that depends on a number of factors, but I would say you can probably. I would say it's about a ten year commitment. Oh. Yeah. Um, but a lot of chickens will only lay, um, like uh, lay well for maybe six ish years. Um, so that's too, where you kind of have to decide, you know, what's going to happen when your chickens stop, stop laying, right. Just so that you have a plan, a plan for that. Yeah. Vivian here, the question, it seemed, uh, in the winter, or you look at those boxes that you buy, it mm -hmm. seems that they're kind of small. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, for being in, in the winter, I mean, in the summer, it's wonderful. You can let them out. Uh, and I mean, they get more, more food and, you know. If, yeah. Because if, just, if they're right near you, all they're going to do is they'll eat up any greenery that's in their little tiny patch uh, in, in a few days. So that you have to totally keep giving them scraps or something. And, you know, how do you manage indoors and outdoors? And Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's also back to um, choosing a winter hardy breed, which is very important. 
uh, so that they can have a fulfilled life in the winter as well. I do let my chickens out in the winter still. Uh, they don't love the snow, but usually what we do is we'll snow blow a path for them so that they can still walk around and uh, there's not much for them to eat at, at that time, but they still like to get out, you know, they still want to be outside. Um, I mean, like anyone, they don't like to be out when it's below zero, but if it's, you know, like it is now, like thir a 35 degree day, they're, they're fine. They'll, they would love to come outside. So again, I think that that's part of the commitment though, is that you have to be prepared to do those things in the winter. Um, they'll still, they will be okay though, if they're in a smaller coop for the winter. You know, is it gonna be at, you know, them living their best life as they do in the summer? Probably not, but they'll be okay. Um, one of the reasons though, you do wanna keep their, their inside space small is because of the winter though, because that's how they're gonna retain heat. You don't want to put any kind of um, lights in your chicken coop because if something were to happen and something caught fire, you know, you yes, it, it could be very bad. So I definitely recommend against any kind of heating source like that um, once they're in an outside coop. You you need it when they're in a brooder, but you're checking on them every single day, you know. So you're there's a very low chance of any any kind of accident happening. Um, and the other thing too with some of those heating sources is if you're not checking on it all the time, the birds can overheat and, um, you know, just not good things can happen. So that's why you want your coop to be, the, the inside portion of your coop to be relatively small so that they can huddle together and stay warm. And, and then it also just helps too with cleaning, <laughs> you know, if you have a larger area to clean and whatnot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So, oh, and I should say this picture just cracks me up too. So again, this is my chickens and they are, go outside a lot. This is our, our patio and they like to roost on our patio furniture. And you can see there's my dog who has no problem with them and they all hang out together. So you can have a very fun little family unit with, with chickens. Um, so then the last thing I do have some facts to end with but the last thing is spoil your chickens love them um hang out with them this is my daughter when she was young she's four now but she was um I don't know, maybe like nine months here and she loved sitting in the window and watching the chickens come up and they would you know she'd peck the glass with her finger and then they would peck the glass <laughs> and um we just had a lot of fun and you could see too it's winter there's snow on the ground and my chickens are still outside hanging out and um, so I put here some of the foods. I think that's a very easy way to spoil your chickens. Mine personally love grapes, peppers, zucchini, and cilantro. Those are their favorites. And then insects and mealworms. Um, my daughter, like I said, she's four now. And we will go around the yard and like on um, tree branches and things like that. And we'll collect bugs for the, <laughs> for the chickens and then throw them in the coop. And it's really fun to watch them go to town and on, on some of the insects that we do not want around. And then there are things though that they can't have, um, mostly because they contain toxins that are poisonous to them and can kill them. So um, the outside of an apple is okay, but the core, the seeds are very bad for them. So I just don't give mine apples at all, just as like a practice for me. I don't wanna get in the habit of giving them apples. Um, uncooked beans, they, my chickens love tomatoes, but they can't have unripened tomatoes. So green tomatoes. Um, and then avocado. Technically there's parts of the avocado they can eat, but similar to the apple, there's parts they cannot eat. So again, I just best practice. I just don't give it to them at all. And then chocolates and sweets, dairy, those kind of things probably shouldn't um, be given to your chickens. So then I just have some fun facts again from this happy chicken coop. It's a, I cannot say enough good things about this website. They are lovely. Um, one thing on here is that chickens know who their owners are and that is 100% true. They, they know who I am. They can recognize my face. They know my kids now. Like I said, they know my cat. <laughs> and, um, um, the wine dots. Are, are won't let me pick them up, but they still know that I give them food. Uh, the other chickens, though, will come up and let me pet them and, and pick them up and all that good stuff. Um, 
I think this is a funny one she put in here that the earliest chicken joke dated back to 1847. Some of the other ones here I wanted to touch on. Oh, chickens are smarter than babies. Uh, there are tons of people that clicker train their chickens and can teach them tricks. And, and I, I am not, I'm not that person. Uh, but like I said, my ch chickens do have a, a call so that um, I, can, I can call them back to me when they're outside their coop. But you can do a lot of cool, cool things with chickens. Um, and then, uh, oh, here, this is, I want it because someone asked how old. The oldest chicken ever lived 22, year, or, um, 22 years, which is amazing. That is not not at all the norm. So do not expect your chicken to live that long. And I had said 10 years before, that would be like a really long lived chicken. Um, mine though are five now and they're still laying really well. Um, so I, I feel pretty optimistic that mine will probably live till they're seven or eight. Maybe they'll get to 10. Um, and then one last slide here. This is, a, a alarming fact. Chickens outnumber humans by roughly four to one. The uh, poultry industry, in my opinion, is, is can be quite sad. Um, you know, if you've seen those, those farms. And so I think for me personally, that's, that's why I keep chickens is I just feel better about knowing where the eggs are coming from. Um, but I think that's, that, that is an issue far beyond, uh, <laughs> my my reach here but i feel like i am doing some i don't know some some small part in 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 remedying that i suppose um and then this one here too that the chickens have hierarchies i spoke on that a little bit but it is really important and you'll see it right away even when they're chicks that they start to establish who's who's at the top um oh and then i my kids love that we call our chickens uh, tiny raptors, <laughs> because uh, um, I'm sure you guys have heard, but you know the, the theory that they're direct descendants of the dinosaurs and um, have been around for a very long time. So that that is what I have about chickens. I can stop sharing, and we can we can chat, or um, can can answer questions. Or is anyone thinking about getting chickens? Like, was this? Did I totally deter you from it or are now you like, yes, I will.